after a year and a half, we finally have something new from the MCU. The last thing we saw was Spider-Man Far From Home. We were supposed to kick off phase four with Black Widow and then maybe Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but the way the universe has played out, it's kicking off with these two episodes of WandaVision that debuted on Disney Plus today. This is a spoiler packed review. The entire point of it is to just walk through what happened in these episodes and give my thoughts on everything. So if you haven't watched the show yet, but want my thoughts on it, yesterday I did my spoiler free review. And here I'm gonna go into all the details, the specifics that I didn't want to talk about there. And if you join it in the comment section, feel free to spoil away. No need for spoiler warnings because it's in the title of the video. They were warned by the title. If you're new to kind of my spoiler reviews, they're intentionally a little bit more relaxed freeform as I just kind of let you know my thoughts on what happened and walk through it in the tail down below in the description i'll kind of try to have as well as the pinned comment kind of the outline of when things are happening if you want to skip ahead to some specific things that happened in the episode but don't want to hear everything that i'm going to say it's down below with that said let's get started my overall thoughts on it i've now watched all three episodes that were given to the press twice and I still don't really know how I feel about it because I, I don't know where they're going with this. I don't know how it's all going to tie together or how the execution of that will fit with what they've done thus far. Because as I said in my spoiler free review, these play out as just episodes of sitcoms of decades past. Each episode fits the format of the sitcoms of a different decade starting in the 1950s, in, in which case... There's just such a gigantic kind of gap between what the MCU has always been and what this is, and there's no transition. This episode kicks off with their theme song of them pulling into their house in the style of like, I love Lucy or something like that. That's where the episode begins. There's no transition. There's no context. We're just in a sitcom, except we know these characters are from the MCU. So you're, you immediately go, what on earth is going on? You get to the end of the first episode and there's some little hints, weird oddities that happen in the episode, pulls back and that's the first time it makes it clear that something's really going on here, but no answers are given. You finish the second episode. Once again, hints, moments, but we don't know what's happening and it's tough to process and know what to do with something that's so far removed from everything that we that's come before. I, I, I've been skeptical of this show pretty much all along. As soon as they said, yeah, it's going to be like a 50s sitcom with Wanda and Vision. I was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> and the big criticism of the MCU is that there's a certain predictability to it. They follow templates, kind of feels the same. They play it safe. So this obviously is a big, bold move nothing same here except a couple characters, everything else wildly, wildly different. So some people have tried to be like, be like, dude, you said that you, the MCU is too predictable and you want to see them do something different. They do something different. Now you're complaining. It's too different. Let's try and find the reasonable take on this saying that their action spectacles are too kind of follow too many predictable uh, templates and have a certain sameness and then jumping to 1950s sitcom without a bridge between the two of them. Uh, there's a lot of room between these two things. There's a lot of room to say, yeah, they did something different, but everything different doesn't mean that it immediately feels obvious. It fits nicely together. So I, I I think that's where there's a certain group of people that their natural inclination is to, if you loved this, if you love Wanda, you love Vision, you love they're doing something different, so you want to defend this, and you're going to want to just fight back at people that don't immediately latch on to it. You sign, people signed up for the MCU for big blockbuster spectacle, and thus far, these first two episodes give 1950s, 1960s sitcom, no explanation only a few hints. That is a lot to ask of people. A lot of people reasonably will be like, 
I'm just not into this. And so they're going to tune out. That's a reasonable thing to do. If they say it's terrible, if they just say it sucks, uh, you know, I think maybe they're jumping to conclusions and they're confusing not for me with this is poorly executed. It's very well executed what they're going for, but that's not quite the same thing as saying that it's for everyone. Something can be very well done and that doesn't mean that I'm going to like it. And I think that's the piece you have to keep in mind here. Millions and millions and millions of people have come to expect spectacle action from MCU. This is literally a 1950s style sitcom and a 1960s style sitcom. Not what we signed up for. That is reasonable to be frustrated by that. From there, I'll head on through the episode and talk through the things that stuck out to me. Kicks off immediately with 1950s style intro to a sitcom with them pulling up to the house uh, with the cutesy song and everything. They walk inside and immediately it kind of goes into old style sitcom humor. And it's just clear, plain as day, they are fully committed to this kind of premise of doing a family sitcom with these characters. And they start having a little bit of banter about their anniversary that's coming up. And do they remember what it is? Do you remember what it is? That's the type of banter that you have in these types of shows. But pretty quickly, what you start to realize is that this is our first hint that something is wrong even with them. They don't fully know what's going on. They showed up in this world just as confused as we did. And that's one thing I kind of like about the way the show plays out thus far is that the creators know that they're doing something weird and different. The characters know that something weird and just different is going on. And us as the audience are like, this is weird and different. So we're trying to figure out what's happening. I kind of I kind of dig that element about it, but I very much appreciate that they found a way to use the type of banter, dialogue, the types of situation that would be in these types of situational comedies about an anniversary that they're trying to remember what it is. And they tie that into the greater mystery going on with the show as a whole and the mystery that the audience is experiencing. So moving through the episode, Catherine Hahn shows up. She's the neighbor Agnes. As of this point in the show, she's just behaving like a neighbor saying neighborly type things from one of these shows. And then we see the vision plot line where he goes to his job, where he computes things. And once again, we start getting another hint that something's up here because he computes stuff. And he's like, wait, what do we do here? And he's trying to figure out like, what is my job? Like, I, I know I do stuff. I know I'm computing things. I've got a big pile of stuff that I just did and productivity's up. But what are we producing? What are we doing? And it's all just a empty shell of a reality. From here, the next, the situation of the situational comedy is set up to where uh, Vision's boss, he finds out, is coming over for dinner and he starts to think maybe that's the thing that they're supposed to be celebrating that night. And so he ends up on the phone with Wanda. Wanda's been talking with Catherine Hahn, Agnes. So they think it's going to be romantic anniversary for the two of them. And so they have a phone call that's very much in style 1950s sitcom where each person has a preconceived notion of what they're talking about, but they're speaking in vague language to not give away what they're trying to planning. And therefore they wholly miscommunicate typical situational comedy type setup for um, conflict. After their phone call, it cuts to a commercial about a toaster. And they're talking about outdated toaster technology and they have this brand new toaster that can work. And you're like, well, they're putting a lot of time into this little toaster bit. And as the toaster's cooking, it takes like a second too long. Like it's a little bit awkward. Like you're like, what, what just happened right there? And then the light on it starts to glow red. And you're like, wait, wait, what? Why is that red? What am I, what's kind of going on here that that's the only thing that's in color? And you, you wouldn't might not necessarily pick up on this the first time you watch it, but the symbol on the toaster is repeated throughout the rest of the show. It becomes a symbol that you can go Easter egg hunting for once you've watched through and you know that it's something to look for. But the toaster has this symbol on it. And then at the end, it says, forget the past. This is your future. 
And that's there's certain recurring motifs throughout this that the, each episode kind of has some sort of theme to it, some sort of idea that's being repeated for somehow telling you whatever's going on, but we don't know exactly what that is. But forget your past. This is your future. Vision shows up at home with his boss and wife following. The lights are dimmed because Vis uh, Wanda is setting up a romantic evening. He Vision walks into the kitchen and then Wanda, who's dressed up all fancy for her husband for a candlelit dinner, walks up to surprise the boss. And um, of course, it, like it's all of the types of things that you expect in a comedy show like this. And it leads to Wanda in the kitchen trying to use her magic to cook dinner. But in doing this, she keeps almost being exposed for using magic. And so then Vision's trying to cover up with the boss's wife. And so he starts singing yakety yak, don't talk back and old McDonald to the boss's wife. All typical, like I said, sitcom stuff. They head into dinner to sit down. And the boss, who's the whole time been presented as like this no-nonsense, always asking questions like, so how long have you been here? What are you doing here? And both of them realize like they don't know when they met or when they got married or how they got here. Where did they, they don't they don't remember the, the past stuff at all. So they're sitting there at dinner and they can't answer the questions. Remember our ad, forget the past, this is your future, and they're forgetting their past, they don't know what the anniversary was, clear theme of the episode, and the boss keeps kind of getting more and more worked up, worked up over this, and as he keeps doing this, the kind of tense music starts growing on it. Oh, Arthur, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. And then he starts choking, and his wife is like, trying to get him to like, like calm down a little bit, but she's like disc, like she's kind of worried, but she's laughing and it's just very unsettling. It's like, it's just kind of playing this eerie music and kind of zooming in on faces. The guy falls over like he's about to die. And then it just cuts to Wanda and in her normal voice, not her old timey sitcom -y voice. She goes, vision, help him. And it, like, she, like she snapped out of it for just a second. Vision walks over, reaches in, pulls food out of the guy. Guy's happy. And then the situation is resolved. The boss likes him, thinks that maybe he will be management material and things end up going well for them. And uh, he's going to get the promotion on Monday whenever he comes back around. And so then at the end of the episode, you have Wanda and Vision sit down on the couch, kind of reflecting. We are an unusual couple, you know. Oh, I don't think that was ever in question. You know, we're an odd couple. We're not like other people. We don't have a song. We don't have a story. We don't even have rings. And then snaps rings onto their fingers. I do. Do you? I do. And you see Vision kind of reach around and he pushes a button like on a remote. And the camera kind of pulls back. And it does kind of like TV fuzz. And then we're like in a room. And there's someone writing notes, watching them on this screen. And you see the symbol that was on the toaster in the ad is there. And this is where like in the real world credits roll. And so you watch this and this is our kickoff to phase four. Last we saw Wanda, you know, she's beating up Thanos. She's at a funeral for, for Tony. And then now she's literally in a 50s sitcom and there's people watching like, kind of Pleasantville vibes. You get Truman Show vibes about it, but also something eerie because there's these symbols that stand for things. There's a, whenever it breaks from the sitcom to like hint at something's going on, it's a creepy vibe to it. And so it's just, it, it immediately just builds large amounts of intrigue. Like what on earth is going on? What on earth am I watching right now with all of this? So if you're like me, you mean, what on earth is going on? I got to watch the next episode. So click to the next episode. So we move to episode two at this point in time. Starts with a cold open of them in their two beds. And they hear something outside that wakes them up and Wanda uses her powers to turn the light on. They have some banter back and forth about that. Clearly Vision is scared to go to check to see what's going on outside. And she's like, you need to go check to see what's going on outside. And then there's another bump and their beds kind of squeeze back, squeeze together because there are two separate beds squeezed together, snap the fingers and they turn into one bed. And she uses her powers to like open the curtains and realize, oh, it's just a tree banging on the, the door or window. Well, I think we handled that well. 
But this becomes a recurring thing throughout the episode of something's knocking on their world. Something seems to be trying to like break in or something. And so they look and then they realize they're in one bed together and they make googly eyes at each other. I, I know I've got a lot of young people that watch some of my videos, so I don't want to have to explain what happens next. But they pull the sheets over their heads and that's very important for where the episode ends. Then it cuts to a bewitched style cartoon opening sequence with a new jingle, which I just was a lot, thought it was a lot of fun. The way that they did kind of these um, openings for it, that they have a theme song, they match the style and everything. A really nice touch to kind of sell the sitcom vibe of this. Once we come out of it, they're preparing for a talent show where they're going to be magicians, where they don't want to use their actual magic power. So they're just doing kind of old tried and true illusionist tricks and have some back and forth about whether they should use their powers, but they really want to fit in. And so later on, Wanda's cleaning up the house and she hears another thud kind of shake of the house. So she walks outside and the eerie music kind of starts to play again and she finds like a little remote control helicopter thing in the bushes and it it's in color once again. It's got a couple of different colors on it and on the side of it is our symbol, our little symbol that whatever it is, the show doesn't answer in these first two episodes, but the symbol keeps reappearing and when the symbol's there, we have color on the screen, and so it means something, but we don't know what that something is, and I don't know all of the places that the symbols start to show up here. Then Catherine Hahn walks up to invite Wanda to, I guess, the planning meeting for the talent show that they're going to. They have some nice little banter back and forth between going, I guess, to its Dottie's house. Uh, Dottie is played by an actress that was actually on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So that was a nice little detail that this actress from Buffy the Vampire Slayer came back for this show. And she's she's playing someone that has basically the same personality as her character from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is kind of amusing to me. But they're planning the meeting and the Dottie character is just the worst. She's just looking for reasons to kind of swat people down. She's the... Um, Type A person that wants to control the meeting, have everything play out the way she wants it to happen. And while they're there, um, while, while Dottie's talking, she says, the devil is in the details. And Catherine Hahn leans over and she goes, that's not the only place the devil is. Which, once again, pretty sure that is a hint at where all this is going. Some sense that some indicator hinting at this detail that's important for the show as a whole. I haven't read the House of M comic line that's influencing a lot of this, so I don't really know the deep details and don't want to know too many of them because I'd rather see the story unfold as I watch it. But little stuff like that, that's where watching it a second time was very enlightening. It was... A, it's a different experience as you're like, what is am I watching right now? It's like a sitcom and you watch it the second time and you notice symbols and all the different places they show up. And you notice these lines of dialogue that play out and they have much deeper meaning than you initially thought that they did. Then at our meeting, Wanda meets Geraldine and Geraldine starts talking to her, being nice and friendly. And they keep being corrected by the lady who's running the meeting the if, if, you, if you're unaware of this, if you like don't want to know anything that's not stated in the episode, maybe mute this for the next 30 seconds. But the actress is here. The characters we've known from other released information. She's playing Monica Rambeau. She's the little girl from Captain Marvel, grown up, now works for this organization. And that's kind of where she's in this. Her name is not Geraldine. So right off the bat, just knowing that information going into this, I was like, what's what's kind of going on here? Like, what's... How does she tie into what, what is happening here? But she, she seems um, just friendly, friendlier than, than some of the other people in the town. As their meeting comes to an end, Dottie, the leader of it, has them repeat for the children and everyone kind of repeats for the children. And immediately you're like, okay, that, that felt very cult-like, like for the children, the way it was said has a weird vibe to it. And with where the episode ends and certain other ways things play out, it seems like that ties into whatever this is going towards. Whatever we're building towards, 
that creepy little moment had some weight to it. Meanwhile, Vision goes to the library for the community safety meeting, the local watch meeting, and he shows up to it and everyone's like, hey, um, you know, we're, you're not, normally these are invite only, and he sits down, and everyone's kind of treating him a little bit weird until he starts joking around and they're like, oh, you are like us, you can joke around, and he's making jokes about not eating anything, and someone's like, well, would you eat some gum? And he goes, yeah, and it's not food, so he starts chewing on it, and they make a mastication joke, which was Kind of funny that they they did make the joke that they did in something MCU. And then as he's chewing the gum, someone slaps him on the back. So he accidentally swallows the gum and it gums up his works. So like it goes to animation of his insides getting messed up. So then it cuts back to Wanda and Dottie talking. And Wanda's trying to reassure Dottie that they want to fit into the community and she means them no harm. And clearly, like... Dottie is kind of like nervous and she's, she says, I don't believe you. And like the tense music starts to build up a little bit. And then Dottie looks at her and she goes, who are you? And through the pop music, it kind of cuts out. And then somebody says, who is doing this to you, Wanda? Wanda, can you hear me? Who is doing this to you? And then it like tension builds up. Dottie smashes the glass that's in her hand and cuts her hand. Her blood is red. And then they just kind of snap out of it and go back into sitcom mode and go on with their day. Then we get our next kind of TV ad segment on here. This time it's for a watch. And on the face of the watch, it says Hydra on it. And it has a, a different kind of symbol on it, but one that's also repeated in later episodes. This one doesn't have color, doesn't have the symbol that has color associated with the other symbol that you keep seeing showing later up. And Hydra is set, it does say Hydra on the watch. So we go to our talent show and Vision shows up basically drunk from his gears being gummed up. And Dottie starts off the, the event by saying for the children. And then she says, our last act is Wanda and Vision. And they go up and drunk Vision keeps using his powers to do magic. And everyone starts to be like, wait, what? how are they doing all of this? So then Wanda uses her powers to create some explanation for what they're doing. Probably the funniest bit of these two episodes was the hijinks that kind of goes on here. And by the end of it, everyone's laughing. Dottie goes up. It seems like she's going to you know, chew them out and instead decides to give them the award for the funniest group of people that were there. Oh, and right before they won the award, Wanda realizes something's wrong with him. So she uses her powers to remove the gum from him and he's back to normal. That night they go home, they start decompressing everything and it just kind of like cuts to Wanda's very pregnant. And like, oh wow, and they're happy that she's pregnant. And this was, uh, without wanting to say too much about how things work, this is a follow-up to the cold open to the episode. And once again, that theme throughout it, they keep repeating the phrase, for the children, for the children. Talent show starts off, for the children, at the planning meeting, for the children. Now she's pregnant. And all seems tied together, but then they hear a thud at their house. They go outside, they walk outside, and a manhole opens. A guy in a bee costume walks out. There's bees flying around. The tense music starts kind of shaking all around them. And you're like, like, panicking, like, what on earth is going on? And then Wanda in her normal voice goes, no. And then it just rewinds and sets back to them inside right before they heard the thud. They kiss. Vision's face turns color. And then as they start looking around, it does kind of like this transition of everything starts forming into color and changing. And that's the first two episodes of WandaVision. It's so difficult to know what to do with that because I just walked you through the plot of two episodes of a sitcom with very sitcom type situations, but then cut in the middle of it are these weird moments and these Easter eggs and these symbols and these repeated phrases that hint at where we're going, but nothing concrete has happened. No answers have been given, just clues, symbols, messages, repeated so symbols. And that's kind of what kind of draws you in like, man, I, I want to know what's happening next. In my spoiler-free review, I, I said that I wonder if it would have been better to drop this show all at once. 
because I, I wonder if the week to week is just going to try too many people's patience because I suspect at the end of this episode, a lot of people are like, I want to watch the next one. I want to see what's going on, but I don't know what I make of this show. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of people that don't normally watch 60 year old sitcoms that they're intrigued because it's MCU. They want to see the answers, but having to wait a week to get three more clues and then wait another week to get three more clues without something more concrete, I think they could lose interest. If they just had to binge it in one sitting, that momentum of excitement will drive them through the, what's going on with all the, all these different styles? What is this? Whereas like literally two months straight of waiting to get answers. I don't know that everyone's going to hold through. Some people are absolutely going to love how wacky, weird, different it is, and that they're taking these characters, throwing them into a sitcom. Absolutely, some people will love that. There's a lot of people like me that this isn't what we signed up for with the MCU. I'm game for trying it out. I'm to- I'm going to be here the whole time. I'm going to watch all of it. But I also have all these posters, nerdy stuff, and do this for a living. And I just don't know with some of the average Joes where their patience will be with where they are at and how much they're up unloading up front, how much information they're giving at the beginning. Cause this is diving straight into the deep end of sitcom without any explanation. That is a big ask when you're dealing with a franchise that's known for big blockbuster spectacle. When I did the premiere for my spoiler free review, I had a lot of people in the comments that um, I was trying to not give away too much, obviously, because it's a spoiler free review. And I kept trying to make it clear. This is a sitcom. And they're like, yeah, it's a sitcom. But like, you know, how much action is there? Like, There's no action. It's a sitcom. Right. But is there a little bit more action in each episode as it goes along? No, it's a sitcom. There's there's no action. Right. But we, you meet. And they kept trying to get me to say it's a sitcom. But. But thus far, it's just a sitcom. <laughs> I don't know what to make that. I don't know where all the pieces, the clues, I don't know how it's going to pay off. And I imagine when we get to the end and it pays off and we know the answer, that'll make the journey even more satisfying for me. When you rewatch it and you see all the clues and you know what they mean and you can, it's a very different experience from watching it just as a sitcom and being like, well, that was weird. Why did they say that? And that's the reason that I didn't give it a letter score or grade score in my spoiler free review. I'm not going to do that now because I just don't know. With a show like this, I think you have to see more of it to have a more firm position on where you are with the show as a whole. So there you have it. That's kind of my walkthrough of all the this is and that's that happened. My takeaways, the little things that I noticed. And um, I am excited to see the next episodes actually I've already already seen the third episode but I'm I have to wait two weeks now to see the fourth episode and I'm excited to see it and want to know what's going on but at the same time I, I can't say that I'm fully invested in this the way that I am with more traditional MCU type programming let me know your thoughts down below check out my spoiler free review right over there check out my thoughts on my anticipation for all the other Disney plus Marvel shows right over there thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and Marvel too much